the welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori, and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers of the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook, and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. What is a red ripper pea? It is an heirloom, open pollinated cow pea variety that works great as food, a cover crop, or wildlife pea. This field pea produces long trailing vines that can be trellis to save space in the garden. So we talked about the different kind of peas. And so what I'm gonna be cooking today is what we call ripper peas or cow peas. And uh, I want to show y'all, though, the difference between uh, cooking them fresh and then some of them that we cooked had already, uh, the, the shell had already dried up. So that meant that the peas inside had already made dried peas. There's about three cups in here. That's generally about enough for me and Danny to have a, a good pot of beans, just me and him, and next day have a little bit of leftovers. But... Um, after shelling them and rinsing them, I've got about three cups here, and that was just, Danny went out there and just uh, started picking, and I'm telling you, we're going to have a lot of peas. The peas have done really well, and it just seems like uh, peas really like, of course they like the rain, of course. they got to have some moisture, but these kind of peas really take, are heat tolerant and drought tolerant. They seem to do really good. And that's the reason that your old timers, uh, that's what they survived on was different kinds of peas because they were just easy to grow. So anyways, we love peas. In fact, we'd rather have a pot of peas or pinot beans or something like that when we would, than we would green beans. It's not that we don't like green beans, it's just not our favorite. But you give us a pot of peas, ripper peas, cow peas, purple holes, field peas, whatever kind, creamers, just whatever. We just love them. So this is your fresh ripper pea. And it is, you can see that they are plump and they're kind of soft. They're in between there being a little bit hard and a little bit soft, but it really doesn't take long for these to cook. And then, we had some that were already, the shell was already dried up, and um, it made dry peas. So, you can hear them, and you can see how they, they dried and they shrunk up. Whoops. So, that's, that's when they're, they're into the stage of being dry beans or dry peas. And what I'll do with these, I'll just put them in a, in a, good, in a jar, put a good lid on them, and uh, you just cook these like you would any dry bean. And you can even can these after they're dry, just like you've seen me do uh, several times in my canning videos of canning dry beans. And I've also got videos canning fresh peas too. So I just wanted to show y'all the difference in what they look like when they're fresh or when they're already dried. But either way, they're going to be good. And we got a lot of picking to do. First thing I'm going to do is I just got me a, a pot here. Always make sure that your pot's big enough. Just depends on how many cups of beans you're cooking. And got about three cups here. First thing I'm going to do is turn my stove on. Get it. Heat it up. I've got, I don't know, it's probably about a cup of 
diced up smoked bacon. And I buy this at Hayes Store. Um, I don't know, not all of y'all have a Hayes Store, but we do. But uh, it's just already chopped up bacon. And it's, it's not as high as sliced bacon. I don't understand that, y'all. But anyways, I always pick some of this up and then I separate it out and put it in uh, Ziploc bags for how much I might need for, for any kind of recipe I might need diced up bacon for. It's still kind of frozen, so, but it'll work. I'll put it in the pan, but you can see how it's already diced up, some of it, and that's the way I buy it. Now, if I don't buy it like that, I just dice up my own, but this was really cheap, and I use a lot of bacon to cook with, so I bought a couple packages and separated and put it in the freezer. I'm going to put my bacon in here. And I'm just going to let my bacon render. And for some reason, if my lights go out, I apologize, but it's really blinking today. But the, the heat index is really high today, so. Sometimes when you're rendering bacon, you may have to put a little bit of some kind of uh, bacon grease down here just to keep it from sticking or some kind of oil. But this bacon's got enough fat on it that I don't think it'll stick. And uh, it's going to make enough grease to saute my onions in. Now a lot of people cook their, their pigs in different ways. I've got a quart of chicken stock here. And this is what I'll be using as my liquid. Now if there's not enough when I put my stock in there, if there's not enough that covers my beans up as much as I like, I just add a little bit of water to it. You don't have to use chicken stock, but I'm telling you, it makes the best peas. You can use a vegetable broth, or you can use all water if you want to. That's just up to you, as long as you got some seasoning in there. Because back in the day, they didn't always have, you know, any kind of chicken broth or vegetable drop, just, you know, just handy for when they're cooking peas. They just put water in there and uh, if they had some fat they could render, some lard or something, they'd put some of that in it for sure. So I've got my stock, my peas, my bacon, i got my onion over here I'm fixing to cut up. I've got some ham here that I canned and it's just chunked up ham. It's not pretty. Canned ham is not pretty in the jar, but it's easy to do and it tastes good. This was uh, canned up December of 2019, and it's still just as good as it was when I first done it. What I do with this ham is anytime I need, you know, soup or beans, or sometimes I even make a ham salad out of it, any kind of casserole or anything like that, canned ham is really, it's really, a good thing to have and it's just easy to can up. i tell you what this was. I can't remember if it was maybe a holiday that I had made a big ham or I just cooked a big ham for maybe a Sunday dinner. I can't remember. But there was quite a bit of it left and I just chunked it up and canned it. So I've had all this ham all this time and it's just been handy. And like I said, this was canned in 2019, and it's as good as it was as the day I done it. I mean, as far as I know. And this jar looks good, too. The ham looks good. And uh, looks like we're good to go. So if you've never canned ham, it's an easy thing to do. You know what, I'm going to put me just a little bit of oil in here, and this is just a peanut oil that I use all the time when I'm cooking. I've got olive oil. I'm out of fresh lard, but we've got a couple of hogs that's fixing to go to the processor, and I told him that I wanted all the lard I could get, because I'll render it out and I will... Uh, I don't know if I'm going to can it this time, 
any other time that we've rendered fresh lard, we just uh, put it in mason jars, put a, a lid on it, or sometimes I'll just put a piece of cloth over the top and uh, tie it, and I put it in the very bottom of my refrigerator, or we freeze it in mason jars. And we had lard for a long time that way. So my bacon is cooking up. That one piece still a little bit frozen. I'm going to go ahead and cut my onion up. Danny is still at work. That's one thing I like about summertime is I get home earlier than uh, when school's going on. So it makes it nice for me to come home, get some supper done, and uh, just kind of get things going when it's not so late. My bacon's starting to render up pretty good. Since I'm going to be cooking an onion, I'm not going to wait till my bacon just gets fully cooked. I'm going to go ahead and put my chopped up onion. I'm going to put about a half of a medium onion in here. But you put as much onion as you want. And of course I'll kick this other half and use it in something else. And I'll also cut me a hunk off to eat with my peas, too. <laughs> so I've got my bacon and I've got my onions in here. So now what I'm going to do is I turn my heat down just a little bit. And I'm just going to let my onions soften up just a little bit. My onions have been cooking and they're starting to get, you know, a little bit softened up a little bit. But I don't have to do it all the way because they're going to be cooking with the beans. And I've got a good teaspoon of minced garlic that I'm just going to cook for about a minute. You can see I didn't just get my bacon just crispy crispy, but it is cooked. And it's going to cook even more with when the beans are cooking. Just kind of cook that, saute that garlic just a little bit. I guess y'all know me by now that you know that if I have forgot to put my garlic in here, <laughs> somebody would comment and say, Miss Lori, I cannot believe you didn't put garlic in that. And that's the truth. Okay, I'm going to put my quart of chicken stock. I'm going to put my three cups of fresh peas. And at this point, I've got plenty of liquid in there. Let me open up my my ham. I should have done had it open. There we go. I didn't think I was going to get that jar open, y'all. I've got this um my friend Miss Vicky off Vicky's Country Home, she found this for me, and I'm pretty sure she found it on eBay. Now, I think you can um, 
find the new fangled ones that they're making now on Amazon. Kind of like this. But I just absolutely love this thing. I do. Thank you, Miss Vicky. So I've got this pint of ham. And it does have ham broth in there. I'm not going to waste that at all. It's got a little bit of fat on top, but that's only going to make it taste that much better. Now, there's not a lot of ham, but it's plenty for a pot of beans this size. So it's got its bacon, and it's got just a little bit of ham in there. It's got its onion, garlic. I'm going to put about a half a teaspoon of black pepper. And a lot of y'all have asked me about, about my salt and pepper um, grinders here. I found these at a flea market. And I'm not real sure where they come from. I wish I knew so I could give y'all more information on it. Um, I don't know. One of y'all might can look it up and see if they have any on uh, eBay or somewhere. But it, it does. It looks like a like a faucet handle is what it reminds me of. But it's very easy for me to turn with my little arthritic fingers here. I'm going to put some salt. Since I've got hand and bacon in there, I'm just going to put maybe a fourth of a teaspoon, then I'm going to stop, and uh, I'll taste it later. I know a lot of pe people don't cook their beans with salt. They think it makes it tough. I've never had a tough bean or a pea. And I've always put salt in my, my beans when I was cooking them. So, there you go. Now, if you want it a little bit spicier or a little, just a little more flavor to it, we just like it simple just like this. Besides the garlic and salt and pepper, you could put you some jalapenos in there some green, some uh, canned green chilies, um, put your little cumin in there, uh, so a little hot sauce, just whatever. But this is just the way we like it. So I'm going to put the lid on it. I'm going to let this cook. And it's probably going to take anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes. It just depends on how many beans you've got going in your pot. A big old pot like this is a uh, if it was full, it, it would take quite a while for them to get good and tender. I like my beans really tender. So you never know from time to time when you're cooking them, really, how long it's going to take to cook them. I'm going to fry us up some yellow squash and some potatoes, canned potatoes. Now I took the squash and I cut it in half and I took the seeds out. Mr. Brown... Um, Danny just don't, he don't like seeds. He don't like the seeds out of the squash, so I, I try to take them out. He said it's just the texture of it. He just don't like the seeds out of it. So these had quite a bit of seeds in it, so I just scooped them out. And I'm just going to chunk them up. We love fried squash, but I'm going to open up a can of potatoes that I canned a couple years ago and I thought I'd just throw one of this squash in there with it because it needs to be cooked. I've also got ha that half an onion that I'm going to cut up. I'm just going to slice it up some thin strips because if I fry potatoes I've got to have onion in it. And I've also got um, this is a a red bell pepper that I grew. It didn't get very big, but it tastes really good. I'll cut it up, throw it in there too, because it needs to be cooked. The one thing about this, these bell peppers, they're growing kind of squatty, but they don't have very many seeds in them. So I don't know. But they are good. And I love red bell peppers. They're some of my favorite. Now I'm going to open up my jar and you can see that there's quite a bit of starch in there. Now these are a couple years old. I cut these up uh, like you would french fries. But that starch doesn't hit, hurt anything. You just um, dump it in a strainer 
and rinse them. Now some people use the water out of their potatoes that's got starch in it and they'll use it to make bread, potato bread. So that starchy water can come in handy for stuff like that. But I just strain mine and then I just rinse them off and they're fine. But I need to use these potatoes up. Some of them are a couple years old. I need to uh, pull them up front and I need to start using them because I'm going to be canning some more pretty soon. Potatoes out of the garden. So just kind of shake it off, shake some of that water off. I'm just going to throw these potatoes in here with all these other goodies. Just kind of mix that up. And I'm going to grab me some of my, uh, I'm going to be making some cornbread, so I'm going to grab my jar of cornmeal mix and I'm going to throw some in here. That just helps get them, uh, get everything in here crispy when it's uh, frying up. A little bit of cornmeal always helps. Now I'm just going to use my cornmeal mix. It's got cornmeal and a little bit of flour and stuff in it, but it works just as well. And I'm just going to sprinkle some on top and then I'm going to mix it in good. So that's, that's the way that I can, uh, fry up my canned potatoes. That cornmeal does help. And I'm just going to shake this around and kind of get it coated. I'm just going to heat a little bit of a um, little bit of peanut oil that I've done use this oil once. I can't remember if I may have fried some french fries or something. I can't remember. But unless I fry something like fish or something, I always strain my oil and try to use it at least one more time. So I'm going to cover the bottom of my pan with my oil. And I'm just going to drop my mixture down in here. And I'm just going to fry this like you would when you're frying potatoes. No different. My peas are over here still cooking. So what do you think about your ripper peas? They're delicious. Absolutely delicious. Really good. You remember our neighbor, <coughs> James Cook, telling you one time that, of course, they weren't ripper peas. I don't remember what kind of peas they were. Him telling you that if it wasn't for that crop of peas, they'd starve to death that winter. So it wasn't him, it was his neighbors. It was some people around, I don't remember. They, he said if it hadn't been, they had a whole, I guess like a corn crib full of peas. Whippoorwill peas. And they were whippoorwill peas. He said he thinks that family would have starved to death that winter if it hadn't been for them peas. I believe it. <clears throat> Take the lowly place. This is in Luke chapter 14 starting in verse 7. So he told a parable to those who were invited 
when he noted how they chose the best place to say unto them. This is Jesus speaking. When you are invited by anyone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in the place lest one more honorable than you be invited by him. And he who invited you and him come and say to you, Give place to this man. And then you begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you are invited to go and sit down in the lowest place, so that when he who invites you comes, he may say to you, Friend, go up higher. Then you will have glory in the presence of those who sit at the table with you. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. Then he also said to him who was invited, When you give a dinner or a supper, do not ask your friends, your brothers, your relatives, nor rich neighbors, lest they also invite you back, and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you for you shall be repaid at the resurrection of the just. 